Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of protecting remote connections, guys. Okay, so basically when a server is requesting for a client or some kind of two systems are communicating between each other, so there could be some remote calls, right? So all those remote calls, remote connections, everything should be secured, right? Or should be protected in a proper way so that the information security can be achieved, right? So our information is really important and crucial. So we don't want to leak our information, right? Yes. So that thing we will be discussing here, guys. So how two communication things are to systems or two processes or two programs are communicating to each other in a secured way okay so for a remote computer to communicate with the server both the computers must have a common protocol at the physical and data link layer okay so assume that you want to call your friend okay and your friend wants to call you right so both of you will be using your names okay else both of you will be using your nickname so basically there should be something common right yes so that is nothing but we will be having the common protocol right yes so basically assume that the server is accepting tcp protocol and the client is sending http protocol so who how can they understand each other guys so this guy is saying i am http and this guy is saying yeah i am tcp so there will be a confusion right so that is the reason why always both of them should use the tcp or udp or any one for both yes so in that situation it is a good thing okay so there must always be configured to provide secure communication and the server should be configured to re require the remote user to authenticate okay so basically on the okay so basically on the side okay on the client side there should be security guys okay and the server side whenever some user logs in he should be authenticated properly because he is the legitimate user or not who knows right so that is the reason why it should be done properly so if you take the example of our osi model so this is the osi model guys so if you are if you don't remember the uh, shortcut to remember it so please do not tell secret passwords to anyone so there are multiple statements to remember these uh, this table guys so i hope some you know some kind of trick right yes so, or you can use this trick please do not tell secret passwords to anyone that's it okay so here this is one systems layer and this is one systems layer so basically both the applications should be the same okay similarly transport layer protocols should be the same and the data link protocol should also be the same so in this three situations if they are satisfied then we can say that the security is maintained a bit okay so common data link layer protocols okay so the two computers should be using the same protocol at the data link layer and above so above also they should be the same okay so this means that you must configure both the systems to use a data link layer protocol suitable for their both uses okay such as a ppp or slip okay so there must be common network and transport protocol also so basically not only in data link layer but we also need the same protocols which should be used in our network layer and transport layer so the popular will be your tcp ip or udp right so those things could be used okay similarly tcp or ip configuration okay so even we are having some configurations right so how they are working and all those things so those things should also be adjusted in a proper way in both so basically if here the size of the file is 50 mb here also the size of size of file size should be 50 mb so in that way the configuration should also be the same so if your remote computer will be using tcp or ip to communicate with the host network the computer must be assigned an ip address and other configuration parameters appropriate for the network okay similarly host and a remote software okay so each of the computer to be connected must run on application appropriate to its role so basically based on the requirements only everything should be existing guys okay so the client or a remote computer needs the client program that can be physically layered medium to establish the connection the server that is nothing but host computer needs need or must have a response program so basically this should have a request program and this should have a response program okay okay so and both of the programs should be of the same and the both members could be different okay similarly security so the host computer and the other computer on the network to which they are attaching must have a secured mechanism in that control access of the network so basically the connection should also be secured okay
yes so this is the whole process of protecting remote connections guys so i hope everyone got some basic idea right yes so in the next lecture we will be moving on to securing authentication with the curbs guys okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching